Hi guys, this is lesson 7.1 on scanner plots. Please get your notebooks out and get ready to take some notes. Okay, um, there are three different ways that we can um, graph scatter plots and or the ways that we can find trends or relationships between the two sets of data. The first way is, well, let's first go over what a scatter plot is. It is a graph that shows a relationship between two sets of data. So we have something that's on the x-axis and then some kind of data that is on the y-axis. So this scatter plot shows a positive correlation because as x increases, y increases. And we can see if we drew a line that kind of fit in between all of those points, we would see that the line slants upward. So as one set of values increases, the other set tends to increase as well. Now a negative correlation is as x increases, this is x, as it gets bigger, the y values start to decrease. And we can tell that by drawing a line in the data. And we can see that the line slants downward, which means it has a negative slope and a negative correlation. When there's no slope at all, we can't, or when there's no correlation at all, the values show no relationship. So we can't draw a line that slants upward or downward because the points are just scattered all over the place. So there's no relationship between the X and Y coordinates. It's just there's no relationship. Make sure that you have each of these three correlations, positive, negative, and no correlation copy down in your notes along with a picture. So we're going to look at the scatter plot here. And this shows the years of the Olympics and the times that the um, runners got running the 110 meter hurdles. And as the years went on, what do we see happening with the times of the hurdlers. We see that, if we were to draw a line here, the times are getting better and better. Their times are dropping. So what kind of correlation is that? As the years increase, the times start to decrease. So that is going to be a negative correlation because the graph is slanting downward. Let's look at another example. There's a pot as we're looking at this sk skater pot, and this is the uh, Olympic Games, the women's long jump. And as the years go on, what happens to the distances that the women are jumping? Well, if we look, as the years increase, the lengths of their jumps begin to increase as well. So that would be a uh, positive correlation because the slant line is slanting upward. Finally, we need to know how to make a scatter plot. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make our x and y axis. So what I'm going to do is make the L shape. not lining up very well. And on the x-axis, we're going to have the temperature. And then on the y-axis, we're going to have electric use. Which is measured in kilowatt hours. So, as we graph this, we first need to decide what are we going to use for our interval. So, for the temperature, we look here in the smallest temperature, the lowest temperature is 30 degrees, and the highest temperature looks like it's 77 degrees. So, we need to go from 0 up to 70. So, we could count by if we start here at zero, we could count by tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, or we could count by fives. 
we might have a little bit more room for that. So we'll say 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, and then 85. And if you notice, I write the numbers right on the line. Now, on the y-axis, we're going to use the kilowatt hours, and our smallest kilowatt hour is 143, and our highest kilowatt hour is 309. So we have to start at zero. So what I think I'm going to do is count by 25. So each line is going to be worth 25. So if we start here at zero, we have 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, 150, 175, 200. And I'm just writing every other number so it's easier to read. 225, 250, 275, 300, 325, 350, 375, 400. And then we can stop there. And then I'm just going to title my graph so I don't forget. And this is called monthly electrical use. Oops. And this is the, these are the easy things to do with your graph, okay? So make sure that you have all that information written down so you don't lose points. Now we're going to go and graph the points. So when the temperature is 77, which is going to be here 75, that would be 80, so about halfway in between we're going to use 170 kilowatts. So this is 175. It's going to be right about here. Then we have 72 kilowatts, or 72, the temp when the temperature is 72, we use 143 kilowatts. So here's 72. Here's 125. That would be right about there. And when the temperature is 68, so that's 70. So just a little bit less than 70, we use 168 kilowatts, which is going to be right about here. And then we use, when the temperature is 45, well, this one will be a little bit easier because it's right on the line, we use 236 kilowatts. So this is 225, there's 250, so about halfway in between. And then we have 39 degrees, which is just about 40, and 260 kilowatts, which will be right about here. And then we have 50 degrees and 196 kilowatts, which is just about 200. That's going to be right here. And then we have 35 degrees, and we use 244 kilowatts. So that's going to be right about there. And we have 30 degrees. And we use 309 kilowatts, just a little bit over 300. And then um, we use at 47 degrees, just a little past 45, we use 266 kilowatts. So this is our scatter plot. Now the question is, what is the trend? What's the trend of this? If we were to draw a line, it looks like the points slant downward. So as the temperature increases, your monthly electrical use goes down. So there would be a negative correlation. Well, that's all for, for now. Thanks for listening.